Hello guys, how's everybody doing today? I'm so glad that you're back into the channel. And today we are actually gonna start talking about photography. So what's the plan here today? Since we're gonna start talking about photography, I would say we should start talking from the very beginning because that would be helpful to someone. Maybe you already know this part, but it's always good to, you know, visit that again. There's always something to learn. <laughs> so this is basically a series of three videos. We will be talking about the exposure or exposition, more likely exposure, a triangle. This is a very basic video, but it's always important because it took me a while to understand in the very beginning when I got my first camera and I was trying to learn how to stop using automatic mode and run and jump into the manual mode. Because let's face it, you didn't buy this camera to use it on the automatic mode. You want to control it, you want to, you want to understand and you want to be able to do what you want with it. So the first thing to be able to do this is to master triangle of exposure. Right, if you're new to photography, forgot to turn on my light. There we go. Now, if you're new to photography, uh, chances are you never heard about the exposure triangle. So let me try to explain it to you. This triangle is every other triangle. Would you believe that? It has three sides. Each side represents a different setting that you're gonna put on your camera. So you ask me what the three settings are, I'll tell you now. So the first one is a shutter speed, which is actually what we're gonna be seeing today on this video. The second thing is the aperture, and the final one is the ISO. Every time you press the shutter, the shutter button, these three settings are being used. And the combination of how you use these three settings will give you a different result to one picture to another. Hopefully that's a good start. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the shutter speed because that's usually the first setting that everybody's gonna change on their camera to when they need to balance the exposition. And it's also the one that gives the most uh, visible difference from one extreme to the other extreme. So when you change your shutter speed, basically what you're telling your camera is for how long you want it to be capturing the light. Yes, light. Everything that your camera is capturing is light. How it reflects on objects, how it is absorbed by objects, and how it shapes objects. That's what your camera is registering. So when you change the shutter speed, Basically what you're telling it is for how long you want it to capture that light. So the main two effects here is to freeze the movement or to capture the movement of light. So when you set your shutter speed to something very fast such as a thousand of a second or one two thousand of a second, you're telling it to capture just that movement, just a little bit. And when you do this you can capture that drop falling off or you can capture the squeeze of a line or you can capture the drink being poured. For everything you change to get an effect, you also have a counter effect. In this case, every time you put your shutter speed to very fast, you're also capturing light for less time, which means chances are your photo is gonna be really dark. If it is a controlled environment, things are easy. You just add more light and you're golden. If it's not a controlled environment and you cannot change the amount of light, then you're gonna have to start playing around with the other two sides of the triangle. We'll get there. Now, the second effect is that you can capture the movement of light. So. I assume you already seen that picture of a road with all the lights of the cars passing by and no car in the frame. Or maybe a waterfall with all the water so soft. Or even a street uh, that has a lot of people passing by and you want to capture the street but you want all these people to disappear from the frame. You can also do that uh, by using a long exposure. Unless there's someone walking with a flashlight pointed to the camera, then it's just not gonna work. Or maybe one of those shots that you do when you burn steel wool and spin it very fast and you capture the circle of light and all the pieces of fire flying around. All of this is the same concept. Also, the steel wool thing. I am looking for volunteers to go and do that with me again. It's been a while I don't do it and it's always fun, but it's much better to do in more people. So if you feel interested in doing this steel wool shot, uh, let me know on the comments. Uh, we can organize a day to, to go and do it. Preferably people from Dublin, because you know that's that's where I live. And, and when we do it, uh, we should also do a video, a vlog, an official one this time, not a fail one. Anyway, by leaving the sensor of your camera capturing the light for longer, we will let you capture all the lights passing through the frame, but keeping all the background static. But yes, there's a consequence to it. Two, actually. Opposite to when the shutter is too fast. 
and you didn't have enough light. Now you might have too much light. You be you be you will be you will be overexposing your picture. So for that, you can either play around with the other two sides of the triangle, or you can use an ND filter, which is basically a sunglasses for your lenses. And the second consequence is that you very likely have some sort of blur on your shot. If it's either from you not being able to keep the camera perfectly still when you're shooting because you're breathing and you're you're moving, or when you or that person on the frame that you can actually see the movement of their leg when they're walking. Now which shutter speed should I just leave my camera on? Well it depends on what you're looking for. But a basic rule, and I only came across this just a, a short time ago, and he absolutely make a difference on my on my photos, is that you should never leave your shutter speed lower than the double of the maximum of your aperture. Simple, isn't it? Let's talk this through. This is a 24 to 105. So that means I should never leave my shutter speed lower than one divided per 210. So 105 times two, 210. Since we don't have 210, Let's round it up to 250. So I should never leave my shutter speed lower than 1 per 250 when I'm using this guy. And this is a 70 to 300. So 300 times 2, 600. So I should never leave my shutter speed lower than 1 per 600 when I'm using this guy. Is this a rule? Should you follow it every time? Well, it helps, but it's not a rule. You can set your camera to whatever you feel like it. Uh, it's not a guy on YouTube who will tell you what to do and you have to follow it. But yes, it does help, it does make a difference. It made a difference for me. And it's just a simple way of remembering what you shouldn't go lower than. So guys, that's it for today. I hope I helped you guys to understand a little bit more of one of the sides of the triangle. Please feel free to comment any questions you have. Just leave them in the comments below. If this video helped, please make sure to leave me a like. And if you wanna see more content about photography and camera basics and anything else related to photography please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notified what's next week out. next week the same day we will have the uh, camera basics about aperture and that's the second side of the triangle so if you like this video big chances are you're gonna like that one so keep tuned and i shall see you next week